Personal Decisions In your future veterinary career, there will be a lot of decisions to be made. Two main decisions to be made are how to achieve work-life balance and seeking overseas exposure opportunities. Firstly, we will talk about work-life balance. After you graduate, you will find that career, family, society takes up a lot of your time. Friendship, romance, marriage, motherhood and career. It is very difficult to balance it all. It will be unhealthy for the family to have a workaholic that only focuses on the success of his profession or business. Be a stay-at-home mother or father if that is what you want. If you cannot balance these three demands, you will suffer burnout, divorce if married, depression issues. Some commit suicide as they cannot cope with the stresses of living chronic diseases, and early death due to negligence of health. To prevent the above problems, the solutions are prioritize. Know how to prioritize your tasks at work. Focus on the most important aspects of work and do it well. At the start of each day, rank the tasks on your to-do list according to importance. Most employees prefer high pay and less work so as to spend time with the family and friends. Be realistic as the company needs to make money to survive in a very competitive world. Let your employer know if you cannot cope with the caseload or find a better employer. For self-employed vets, have an employment system to prevent overwork and stress in yourself and the staff. More than 40 small animal cases per vet per day may be considered too many. The quality and standard of care will be poor if everyone has no time to rest, eat well and exercise. Staff will resign and new staff need to be trained. A healthy balanced diet is important. Eat more vegetables and fruits to prevent high blood pressure and dying from diabetes and kidney diseases. Seek advice from mentors and senior vets. Be interested in how other professionals become successful. For example, in my tour, I met a French artist selling his paintings at the market. He works around 6 months per year so that he has time for his family. He told me how he markets his paintings through his website and had buyers from China. I bought a small painting from him. It's important to take a break. Schedule at least 30 minutes per day to exercise or meditate. During your free time, do what you love, be it photography or travel. My hobby is digital photography. Here are some interesting photos I took in Myanmar. A rice field fisherman wearing similar shirt pattern as me. Photograph of a smoking woman in Yangon. Seeking overseas exposure opportunities. Many vets leave their homes for jobs in countries such as Hong Kong, Australia and Singapore. Vets can learn different technologies and approaches which can be incorporated into their veterinary practice. Working in a completely new environment may be a step out of the comfort zone. Yet, it could provide a great opportunity for vets to gather more experience and improve in their skills. One good example is Dr. Tian Tun Ong, who went out of his comfort zone and worked overseas in Singapore for 20 years. He's a good role model who have made many sacrifices in his veterinary journey. In the 20 years, he gained vast experiences in the diagnosis and treatment of small animal medicine and surgery. He then started his own practice, Royal Asian Veterinary Surgery, which has been very successful. Here are some stories of Dr. Ao that showcases his passion and fearless demeanor that truly inspires. A case of the fearless vet. July 20th, 2010, a cat in the Grand Hyatt Hotel had swallowed a needle. The cat pawed his owner every time he tried to open his mouth to remove the needle. So, he phoned me at Topayo Vets for a house call. I requested Dr. Ong to help me as I knew he was good at handling cats. He is a fearless vet. We took the lift to the owner's apartment and saw the cat hiding between the toilet and the wall of the master bathroom. Dr. Ong grabbed the cat by the scruff of the neck before I could say hello. The cat clawed him and escaped to hide behind the curtain. Prepare the sedative injection first, I said to Dr. Ong. He did it. Then. He quietly approached the cat behind the curtains and gripped his scruff of his neck and held him up. I injected the cat's backside muscle. Suddenly, another cat pounced onto Dr. Ong and scratched his leg. This was unexpected. The owner removed this cat. We wrapped the first cat in a towel and pulled out the needle.
For example, in November 2008, I was performing an uncommon surgery. A dog had a big chicken bone trapped between the gullet and the stomach. You can see this from this x-ray. He sacrificed his day off to observe the surgery. What will you do? I asked him. This is part of my coaching method to elicit ideas from Dr. Ong. Should I cut the bone into two halves? He shook his head. I had given an antispasmodic earlier. I pulled the bone out from the gullet and stomach easily. The dog recovered. Before surgery, the Maltese vomited continuously. The bone has been taken out, the stomach has been stitched up by me. You can see the bone. There is indeed so much to learn from Dr. Ong. To be a top vet, it definitely involves sacrificing time with family and friends. Remember to think about what is important to you and what you want to achieve.